and welcome to my Chromatic Nature YouTube channel where I show you guys how I use natural dyes to dye clothes. Today I'm going to show you how I use cochineal insects to dye. That's right, bugs. If you don't like the idea of using insects like that, I understand. When I first heard about cochineal dye, I was surprised and kind of curious like why would we be using bugs to dye things so i've researched into the history of using cochineal dye and there's a lot of information uh that surprised me so basically before synthetic dyes were invented cochineal was very widely used the british red coats were dyed with cochineal dye clergy with their like red robes cochineal dye. And actually, before cochineal insects were imported from the New World to Europe, Europe was already using another bug found in the Mediterranean region to dye red colors. The use of bugs to create red and fuchsia colors literally goes back further than writing does. I'm not gonna get too into it here, but I wrote a pretty long and pretty well-researched blog post about the history of cochineal dye use and also about how they're farmed and harvested today. I will be including a link to that blog post in the description of this video. If you're like not sure at this point if you want to watch this video or not, the actual like cochineal dye that I purchased, the bugs are dried so it's not like you're gonna see me like squishing juicy like big bugs or something no like that's not gonna happen I'm, i'll tell you right now they don't even like look like bugs unless you like really look at them well if you're still watching then let's go dye things with some bugs this is the batch that I'm gonna dye today. It's mostly stuff that's already been dyed with either Osage Orange or Indigo, but I feel like it needs more, so I'm adding Cochineal as another color to these garments. Some of the garments I'm tying into bundles, and some I'm just going to over dye with solid Cochineal color. All of these tying techniques are super simple, and you only need some rubber bands to do them. Now it's time to weigh the fibers that I'm going to dye. They weigh 638 grams, which is about 1.4 pounds. Now I'm measuring out the mordant. I'm using aluminum acetate and I need 10% of the weight of fiber in aluminum acetate. 65 grams is close enough for me. I'm dissolving the aluminum acetate with hot water and that cloud of powder is why you should definitely wear a dust mask when handling aluminum acetate. It doesn't dissolve very easily. Using hot water helps, but you still gotta do a lot of stirring. I'm adding the dissolved mordant into a bucket of water and I'm actually splitting the mordant in between like three containers because I don't want the stuff that's dyed with Osage Orange to get that yellow color on the other clothes. And also I'm splitting it to kind of organize myself because I'm also doing another dye batch at the same time. It's been an hour and I'm taking the garments out of the mordant bath, but I'm still going to do a chalk after bath. I'm measuring out roughly 5% of weight of fiber in calcium carbonate, aka chalk. Thirty grams is close enough. The chalk doesn't fight the water the way the aluminum acetate does, but it never truly dissolves. It actually just mixes with the water and then settles to the bottom after some time. I'm adding the chalk to fresh buckets of water and the clothes are gonna soak in this for about half an hour. After half an hour, I'm taking them out of the chalk after bath and I'm rinsing them off. This is important because there's a lot of little chalk particles stuck to the surface of the garments and you want to get those off. Now it's time to deal with today's most important ingredient, which is the bugs. Here's my jar of them, which I bought from the Jacquard website. They don't look extremely bug-like in this dried form, they actually look like little pieces of charcoal. 
I'm only using 30 grams of the cochineal bugs, which is about 5% of the weight of the fibers that I'm dyeing, but honestly, it was still kind of too much. They're very potent. What I have to do with them now is grind them. I'm using a mortar and pestle to do it, but it takes some effort to grind them like this. As always, it's best not to use any of your kitchen tools for your dyeing projects if you plan on using them for food prep ever again. So don't grind them in your food processor. That being said, cochineal dye is not toxic or harmful, and its more refined form, carmine, is an FDA approved food coloring. Here's what they look like after I'm done, and now you can see the color that was hidden inside them. What you're gonna wanna have for the next part of the process is a strainer and some cheesecloth. Cut off a piece of the cheesecloth and fold it into a pad that would fit on top of the strainer. For the bug boiling, you'll wanna use some kind of a small container. I'm using a bread pan, um, that's not something I like recommend that you do. It was just my most extra piece of cookware that I didn't feel bad dedicating just to bug boiling forever. Start heating the water and dump the ground up bugs in there. Right away they start releasing a ton of color and I basically just wait till the temperature reaches about 180 before I strain the dye out for the first time. Same as with lots of other natural dyes, it's best to keep the temperature from reaching 200 so the color molecules don't start breaking down. Now that it's reached 180 to 190 degrees and there's a lot of color in the water, it's time to strain it. I'm pouring the liquid through the strainer into an empty clean pot. My strainer setup is kind of risky, hopefully it doesn't flip over on me or fall into the pot. Now I'm gonna take what was strained out and put it back into the bread pan and add more water and heat it up again. I'm rinsing the cheesecloth over the bread pan so that I catch everything that's stuck to it and get it back into the cooking pot. Now the strainer is ready for the next round. And this is going back on the stove. So what you do is you repeat that process over and over again as many times as you have patience and time for because the bugs are going to be giving up more and more color into the water and you just keep restraining it and restraining it and eventually you'll notice that the water is becoming more see-through and the color that's coming out isn't as concentrated and then you can still keep going you can also save the bug grounds for later use if you feel like you can still get more color out of them and you run out of time or you're getting kicked out of the kitchen for your weird bug experiments. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to pour all of the dye that I collected through the strainer into my actual big dye pot that the garments will be dyed in. I'm filling the rest of the dye pot with water, but I didn't pour all of my concentrated dye in there. I'm saving a good amount of it for other things I'm gonna do. Even with all that water added to it, the color is still very rich. Dye pot is ready. And the garments go into the pot. Cochineal dye sets in fast, so I usually only leave the garments in the dye pot for a couple hours. You can see the garments are already very pink. I filled a squirt bottle with the concentrated dye that didn't go into the dye pot and I'm gonna use it to dye these tie-dye bundles without actually submerging them in a dye pot. I also filled a spray bottle with the concentrated dye and that worked very well. And if you're wondering how I got my company logo to magically appear on the shirt as I sprayed with the dye, well, that's going to be a separate video because this one is already getting to be very long. Now let's see how some of these tie-dyes came out. Swirled t-shirt came out lovely. Crumpled tank looking very nice. 
Now this swirled tank, I only sprayed on one side with the cochineal, so that's what that looks like. I decided I want that tank top to have more pink color, so I'm actually retying it and this time I'm going to submerge it in the dye for several hours. And now I'm gonna let the garments hang and cure overnight. The shirt that I sprayed with the spray bottle is so bright pink. It's very like Barbie girl with the white logo screen. Let's finish this batch. I'm washing them in cool water with professional textile detergent. And then I'm doing another quick wash with dye fixative. And into the dryer. I finished the garments, I put labels on and I ironed them and they are ready to be worn. The shirt that I sprayed is super vibrant and if you look inside it you can see all the color just kind of like stayed at the top of the fabric and it didn't actually soak through. The indigo over dyed with cochineal became purple. These are the garments I dyed with cochineal using the squirt bottle, not submerging them. This is the tank top I dyed twice using the squirt bottle and then retying it and putting it in the dye pot. This is the indigo tank top that I showed you how I tied up in the beginning of the video. It turned out super cool and vibrant. These two garments are actually from an earlier batch I've done with cochineal and they're only dyed with cochineal so I wanted to show them to you as an example of what cochineal looks like alone. And there we are. Now you've seen how to dye clothes with bugs. This dye is super versatile. You can use different ingredients to shift the pH of the dye and that will shift the color from being more red to being more purple or either way. I didn't use any of those ingredients this time. I just let the cochineal dye give me the color that it just gives me. You can get pale pinks with it when it's not very concentrated or you can get it to like a burgundy color. I really like how this dye interacts with indigo and makes it purple and you can use it in a spray bottle. Using a squirt bottle to apply this dye kind of works, but you definitely get a richer color if you let the garment be submerged in the dye and really let it soak in it. This is the color that I got when I squirted it with a squirt bottle. And then later I retied this shirt and I left it in the cochineal um, dye bath for a while and I got this burgundy color on it so it became a lot richer even though the squirt bottle had the super concentrated dye in it. By the way, I know I didn't show you guys any light fastness test results for this dye but I have a headband that I made for myself um, with cochineal dye that I use a lot and after like I don't know a year of me wearing it outdoors it still hasn't really faded that much so this dye is pretty color fast just fyi if you would like to see more videos on using natural dyes then subscribe to my channel and come back and see what else i come up with bye bye this shirt came out so cool i'm a bug girl in a bug world when you're when you're making the dye there's a certain smell that you get from these bugs, but it's not a bad smell. It's just like a specific smell. I don't know what to compare it to even. It's, it's very like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe that smell, but it's not bad. It's not like it's gonna make you throw up type of smell. It's t it smells better than you would think it would, I guess.